Do you guys remember when I said I can't wait for Butch and Sonny to come back home so we can get more of some of their real thoughts on what happened with Starliner, including how it was to fly Starliner? I want to shout out Eric Berger with Ars Technica, who stayed till the end of the press conference at Johnson Space Center in Houston to talk with Butch and Sonny one-on-one. -on -one. It was supposed to be a 10-minute interview. It lasted 30 minutes. And apparently Eric and Butch know each other pretty well. And so they were able to really talk candidly about how, quite frankly, dangerous the situation was for Butch and Sonny when they were trying to dock with the ISS. So we already knew that as Starliner was heading to the space station, it lost some of its thrusters. We also knew that NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore had to take manual control of Starliner but their options were much more limited than we probably knew on the ground. So if you were watching the Starliner launch and docking last June, you already know that Starliner ended up losing four thrusters and that Butch Wilmer had to take manual control of the vehicle. But while those thrusters failed, Butch lost the ability to move the spacecraft in the direction he wanted to go. Apparently, Butch and Sonny at that point were only a stone's throw away of the space station. But because they had already had four thrusters failed, this violated the mission's flight rules. In a scenario like this, they were supposed to turn around and come back to Earth. This is because with those thruster failures, approaching the ISS was deemed much too risky for Butch and Sonny aboard Starliner, as well as for the astronauts on the $100 billion space station. But unfortunately, it wasn't safe to come home either. And this is why things got so complicated and stressful and much more dangerous than I think we even knew originally. Butch is quoted saying, I don't know that we can come back to Earth at that point. I don't know if we can. And matter of fact, I'm thinking we probably can't. So I'm really glad that Eric asked them these questions because, of course, many people were asking about their return and, you know, did President Trump and Elon Musk actually rescue them and making it quite political. But Eric decided to get some more of those juicy details about what it was actually like to fly Starliner. And so Butch and Sonny both shared that the launch was actually awesome. The ride to space and the orbit insertion burn were all perfect. The duo shared that the precision, the ability to control to the exact point that they wanted was great. So apparently Butch and Sonny attempted to sleep for several hours ahead of the all important approach and docking with the ISS. This happened on the flight's second day. One thing that we didn't know is apparently that night that they tried to sleep in Starliner, it was extremely cold. Apparently they had traded off some of their clothes to bring up equipment to the space station. And Starliner is designed to fly four people, but of course it was just two people for this initial test flight, which meant less body heat, and it was about 50 degrees Fahrenheit in the cabin. So Butch and Sonny got inside of their spacesuits, put their boots on, gloves, and everything, and apparently it was still cold. But as it was almost time to dock with the space station, Butch already had the performance of the vehicle's reaction control system thrusters, something he was concerned about. To dock with the ISS, those thrusters are essential, and there had already been some problems with their performance during the uncrewed flight test of Starliner in May of 2022. Butch is quoted in Eric's article saying, quote, Before the flight, we had a meeting with a lot of the senior Boeing executives, including the chief engineer. Naveed asked me what was my biggest concern, and I said the thrusters in the valves because we'd had failures on the OFT missions. You don't get the hardware back. So you're just looking at data and engineering judgment to say, okay, it must have been FOD or foreign object debris or whatever the various issues they had. And I said, that's what concerns me the most, because in my mind, I'm thinking if we lost thrusters, we could be in a situation where we're in space and can't control it. That's what I was thinking. And oh my, what happened? We lost the first thruster. Eric explains when vehicles approach the space station, they use two imaginary lines to help guide their approach. These are the R bar, which is a line connecting the space station to the center of Earth. The R stands for radius. 
Then there's the V-bar, which is the velocity vector of the space station. Due to thruster issues, as Starliner neared the V-bar about 260 meters or 850 feet from the space station, Butch had to take manual control of the vehicle. And Butch said, as we get closer to the V-bar, we lose our second thruster. So now we're single fault tolerance for the loss of six DOF control. You understand that? And six DOF control means he's six degrees of freedom or six different movements possible in three-dimensional space, forward, back, up, down, left, right, yaw, pitch, and roll. So the condition of being single fault tolerant means the vehicle could sustain just one more thruster failure before being at risk of losing full control of Starliner's movement. And if that happened, that would necessitate a mandatory abort of the docking attempt. Which is why the situation got so stressful for Butch and Sonny. Butch said, we're single fault tolerant, and I'm thinking, wow, we're supposed to leave the space station because I know the flight rules. I did not know that the flight directors were already in discussions about waiving the flight rule because we've lost two thrusters. We didn't know why, they just dropped. But in the final minutes before docking, NASA waived the flight rules about loss of thrusters. And according to Butch and Sonny, the drama was only beginning at this point. Butch said, quote, we acquired the V-bar and I took over manual control, and then we lose the third thruster. Now again, they're all in the same direction, and I'm picturing these thrusters that we're losing. We lost two bottom thrusters. You can lose four thrusters if they're top and bottom, but you still got two on this side. You can still maneuver. But if you lose thrusters in off orthogonal, the bottom and the port, and you've got only starboard and top, you can't control that. It's off axis. So I'm parsing all this out in my mind because I understand the system. And we lose two of the bottom thrusters, we lost a port thruster, and now we're zero fault tolerant. We're already past the point where we were supposed to leave, and now we're zero fault tolerant and I'm manual control. And oh my, the control is sluggish. Compared to the first day, it is not the same spacecraft. Am I able to maintain control? I am, but it's not the same. And Butch goes on to say, and this is the part that I'm sure you haven't heard. We lost the fourth thruster. Now we've lost six degrees of freedom control. We can't maneuver forward. I still have control supposedly on all other axes, but I'm thinking the F-18 is a fly-by-wire. You put control into the stick and the throttle and it sends the signal to the computer. The computer goes, okay, he wants to do that. Let's throw that out aileron a bit. Let's throw that stabilizer a bit. Let's pull the rudder there. And it's going to maintain balanced flight. I have not even had a reason to think, how does Starliner do this to maintain a balance? Basically, at this point, Butch could not fully control Starliner any longer. But they were basically out of options as well. Simply abandoning the docking attempt was not a solution. And as Eric explains, just as the thrusters were needed to control the vehicle during the docking process, they were also necessary to position Starliner for its de-orbit burn and re-entry to Earth's atmosphere. So Butch had to contemplate whether it was riskier to approach the space station or try to fly back to Earth. Butch was worrying about the same thing. At this point, Butch knew that they were in a very precarious situation. He said, I think both of us overwhelmingly felt like it would be really nice to dock to that space station that's right in front of us. But he also said, I don't know that we can come back to Earth at that point. I don't know if we can. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking we probably can't. So there we are, loss of six degrees of freedom control, four aft thrusters down, and I'm visualizing orbital mechanics. The space station is nose down, so we're not exactly level with the station, but below it. If you're below the station, you're moving faster. That's orbital mechanics. It's going to make you move away from the station, so I'm doing all of this in my mind. I don't know what control I have. What if I lose another thruster? What if we lose calm? What am I going to do? Butch goes on to say, Starliner is based on a vision system that looks at the space station and uses the space station as a frame of reference. So if we had started to fall off and lose that, which there's a plus or minus that we can have, 
We didn't lose the station ever, but we did start to deviate a little bit. I think both of us were getting nervous then because the system would have automatically aborted us. So another juicy detail that we didn't know about, after Starliner lost four of its 28 reaction control system thrusters, the team in Houston decided the best chance for success was to reset the failed thrusters. That basically means turning off your computer and rebooting it to try to fix the problem, but that also meant that Butch had to go hands off from Starliner's controls, which probably would be really unsettling. They were already drifting away from the space station trying to maintain their position, and the station was the only real lifeline at the time because if they lost the ability to dock, the chance of coming back in one piece would be pretty low. And then Butch had to take his hands off of the controls. He's quoted saying, that was not easy to do. So apparently once Butch thought that Starliner was temporarily stable enough, he called down to mission control, hands off. Almost immediately, flight controllers sent a signal to override Starliner's flight computer and fire the thrusters that had been turned off. Two of the four thrusters came back online. Butch said, now we're back to single fault tolerant, but then we lose a fifth jet. He said, what if we'd lost that fifth jet while those other four were still down? I have no idea what would have happened. I attribute to the providence of the Lord getting those two jets back before that fifth one failed. So we're down to zero fault tolerant again. I can still maintain control. Again, sluggish. Not only was the control different on the visual, what inputs and what it looked like, but we could hear it. The valve opening and closing. When a thruster would fire, it was like a machine gun. And Butch and Sonny also said in their interview that they felt pretty confident in the aftermath of docking to the space station that they probably wouldn't be riding home in Starliner. In fact, they didn't really want to ride home in Starliner. While publicly NASA and Boeing expressed confidence in Starliner's safe return with crew, Butch and Sonny, who had just had that crazy, terrifying ride, said, quote, I was very skeptical just because of what we'd experienced. I just didn't see that we could make it. I was hopeful that we could, but it would have been really tough to get there to where we could say, yeah, we can come back. And so, as you know, Starliner came home uncrewed in September and Butch and Sonny just finally came back to Earth last month. And so thanks to Eric for writing such an informative article you can see on X. It already has over 20 million impressions, and that's because Elon shared it. And um, so a lot of people are hearing more of the true story behind the scenes of everything that went down with Starliner. And um, yeah, we didn't know how desperate Starliner's flight to the space station got last summer. So we're, I'm so glad that Butch and Sonny are home safe and that they made it up there safely because it sounds like it was a lot worse than I actually thought it originally was. And by the way, people are wondering what is going to happen with Starliner. Apparently, NASA's Steve Stitch has said that they are looking to do another uncrewed test flight maybe in the fall, but new NASA Administrator Jared Isaacman should be able to weigh in on some of these decisions because we just learned, finally, that the U.S. Senate's nomination hearing for Jared Isaacman to be confirmed as the 15th NASA Administrator is set for next Wednesday, April 9th. So there's some more breaking news for you, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm going to try to post as much content as I can, but as I mentioned, I'll be out of the country for a few weeks. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. So you may have noticed that my background here is a little different. I'm in Taipei, Taiwan, and I'll be out of the country for a few weeks, but I just wanted to make this video because we have been waiting to hear more of, you know, the untold story of what happened with Starliner. And so it's really great that Butch and Sonny were able to not only come home safely via SpaceX, but actually successfully dock to the ISS because it sounds like it was much more complicated than we knew.